Here's what I will say about Bill Maher. Okay. I was a Bill Maher fan for a long time, obviously being a very marijuana friendly guy. Um, I always respected Bill's kind of, um, I guess, bravery before it was safe. He was very open about his pot smoking habits. And I always respected that. And I also respect that he tries to have a kind of nuanced debate to some extent in the mainstream. There isn't a lot of that, you know, so he does try to have different voices and I'll give him credit for that. I don't always agree with the guy, but I think for the like mainstream kind of uh, political punditry type shows, real time is definitely one of the better ones, one of the more honest ones. And he did this rant. He So post-election, there's a lot of cope happening. You know, there's a lot of like, oh, it's because you guys lean. They The Democrats always do this. Like we lean too far to the left thing because they're a right wing party. So they're always going to punch to the left every time they lose as if that's the problem. And I'm going to show you the hard evidence that it's not the problem. Oh, uh, this is a this is a banger. I got a couple of real good proofs for you right here. But let's start with this Bill Maher kind of segment because of all the liberal pundits bill maher has the most spot on take about what happened and i talked about this last week snobs versus slobs you know that's exactly what this election ended up being the slobs beat the snobs you know and i'm a slob i'm you got me there you know but listen to bill maher's take here and i'm going to tell you he almost gets it you know he's he's like there's just a couple things right at the end he has to slide in that made me go, come on, but Bill, you were almost there. Watch this. And finally, new rules. Someone must tell the usual suspects on the far left that the saying is, when you're in a hole, stop digging, not keep digging. <laughs> Talk about doubling down on what got you fucked in the first place. Please Even the one concession I've heard a few people on the losing side offer that liberals should stop saying the Trump voters are stupid comes with a kind of unspoken parentheses. <laughs> we know they are stupid, just don't say it. <laughs> yeah. The snobs versus slobs dynamic. Yeah, I, I got bad news for you. They don't have a monopoly on stupid. You wear queers for Palestine t-shirts. <laughs> And masks two years after the pandemic ended. <laughs> and you can't define woman. I mean, person who menstruates. Ain't that America? You and me. Ain't that America? You're the teachers union education party and you've turned schools and colleges into a joke. You just lost a crazy contest to an actual crazy person. <laughs> And that's like, again, I think that media framing of Trump is one of the key reasons that the Democrats lost because he did that podcast tour and you could clearly see all these like, he's a misogynist who hates women. He's totally crazy and insane because he said cats are being eaten in Ohio. You know, once you actually see the guy sit down with Joe Rogan for three hours, you're kind of like, okay, yeah, he's not, he definitely rambles a bit, but it's, he's not the insane thing that the media has made him out to be. <laughs> Bill misses that. You, you love to speak truth to power, and we always should, but you have completely lost the ability to speak truth to bullshit. The Democratic polling firm Blueprint told Democrats months ago that black voters, AKA their supposedly liberal base, were more likely to find the president too liberal than too conservative. They also so one of the things I love about this is these data points. And, and I think this is a pretty solid breakdown for this reason, because watch these data points. That voters didn't up. just want Harris to distance herself from Biden. They wanted her to distance herself from what they believe the entire Democratic Party has become a Portlandia sketch. <laughs> so again, this is where these fuckers get it wrong. It's not the woke, you know, I mean, that's some of it, right? Like the, the, you know, transition to males in women's sports is it's, it's, I don't agree with it, you know, and I love trans people. I have trans friends, but they don't agree with it. Um, but this is not the reason the Democrats lost. And I'm going to show you why. In just a minute. <laughs> why they actually lost. 
A bunch of privileged mean girls complaining about privilege and trying to make fetch happen. That's right. What a shocker that the people who see everything through the lens of race and sex see their election loss as a result of racism and sexism. Yes, if only we weren't so irredeemably unenlightened, we would have elected a black president by now. Oh, what, we did? Oh, all oh, right, and then re-elected him. Maybe you missed Yeah, see, there you go. That's the thing. You know, I, I, I was guilty of kind of buying it, too, when Trump surprisingly beat Hillary. I was like, oh, maybe the country is racist and sexist. You know, that's what they told us all. And after a while, you're like, no, 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 it doesn't make any sense. We just elected Barack Obama twice. You know, everyone said America was too racist to elect him, but it happened, you know. Because it wasn't on TikTok. And again, this is, this is where Bill ventures into boomer territory. As if, like, the people on TikTok are smarter than you, Bill. Remember when they brought up the Osama bin Laden letter a couple of months ago or like six months ago and everyone was getting banned? They're like, oh, shit, Osama was kind of a little bit on point about what he was saying. So th this is the part of it that, you know, I think Bill does a good job of laying out a lot of the snobby shit, which is what I said, is the Democrats kind of losing factor. The biggest losing factor is that, like, we're always right. And anyone that doesn't b believe the way we do is a dumb, stupid, Trumpy, anti-vax. That, that, that sentiment is why the Democrats. Anyway, let's let Bill finish it. And sexism? Hillary got three million more votes than Trump, which in a normal country would be called a victory. It wasn't... It wasn't 21st century sexism that prevented a woman from being president. It was the Electoral College. Democrats run for office as if the voters don't live here as if they don't go to the grocery store and Starbucks and the office, but they do. They there it is. Paul Krugman, I talked to a guy the other day, uh, just in passing, you know, about the election. And he's like, well, Biden did a good job. And, you know, the inflation's got down and da, da, da. it's like, dude, maybe the numbers that Paul Krugman cites in the New York Times say that, but the, the, the actual hard reality on the streets does not show that at all. And that is... The Democrats walled themselves into their own personal algorithm, their own personal matrix, and this is why they lost. Bill's, Bill's spot on about this they stuff. They right live here. here, and they actually see women and people of color, and it doesn't look like some patriarchal racist nightmare. Do problems remain pertaining to racism and sexism? Of course. But a poll last year asked, if America is the greatest country in the world, more blacks and Hispanic Americans agreed with that than the white progressives. It asked if racism is built into our society. White progressives agreed with that at there higher levels than black and Hispanic people. It yes. asked if government should increase border security. Same result. Hispanic Americans are less okay with illegal immigration than whitey. So I talked to a, a black man a couple of weeks ago who told me he was voting for Trump. And one of the things he cited, just as anecdotal, but, you know, in in the context of what we're talking about, I think it's relevant, is when Biden said, you ain't black if you don't vote for me. He said that really angered him and, and kind of revealed how the Democrats just think that they own black voters. And that really hit me. You know, that stuck with me when he said that, because it's true. <laughs> The votes are in, they don't want your pity. And black people can't afford to indulge rich white people's need to endlessly flagellate themselves. They just want prices to go down and good jobs and the police when you call them. Black people, they're just like us. <laughs> See, and this is why I give Bill Maher credit, because these are the types of truths that the people in that liberal matrix need to, you know, Bill's penetrating that liberal matrix a little bit with this. Kamala spent 100 days telling voters, I know it feels like crime and illegal immigration are bad, but fuck your feelings. Look at this chart. Yes. There's a lot to not like already about the new regime, but maybe take one week to ask what you did wrong. The basis for democratic campaigns has become, we're the smart people. That we know from the get-go. 
No need to look into that. We know that a priori, which is a Latin phrase the red hat people wouldn't have a clue about. <laughs> But they don't need to. Have you seen my In This House We Believe lawn sign? See, it says right on it, we believe in science. Right, which is why you demanded no one even debate whether COVID could have escaped from the one lab in the one city where they were studying it. How far-fetched. But ain't that America for you and me? Ain't that America? The New York Times called it racist. Democrats have become like a royal family that, because of so much incest, has unfortunately had children who are retarded. Okay, I want to stop right here, because that, that was the, of course, part that the press ran with. And I, again, back to the snobs and slobs thing, this whole idea that we have to tap dance around using certain words so we don't offend people and everything, it's dead. Tony Hinchcliffe proved that. Tony Hinchcliffe says retarded all the time, and that guy is more responsible for making mentally disabled people rich over the last 10 years than probably anyone else and providing an environment for them where they're accepted by people who are not disabled. So all this like, oh, you can't say this and that, it's dead. And, and I think Bill Maher, by dropping that word in this little rant of his, is kind of like just making that clear like that era is over guys we're, we're done tap dancing around your feelings over things that are said people who think kurt metzger said it so well people who think words are violence have clearly never been punched in the face he he gets the slobs versus snobs thing here but i'm going to show you hard evidence of the part that all the democrats completely missed <laughs> And the same thing can happen to ideas if they are also conceived in an atmosphere of intellectual incest. Maybe take the clothespin off the, the matrix I was talking and about. And actually converse with the other half of the country. Stop screaming at people to get with the program and instead make a program worth getting with. <clears throat> well said. What good is liberalism if you don't win elections? Last week, <clears throat> Massachusetts Congressman Seth Moulton said, I have two little girls. I don't want them getting run over on a playing field by a formerly male athlete. But as a Democrat, I'm supposed to be afraid to say that. Yes, there's the problem in a nutshell. Because Congressman Moulton sounds reasonable to me, but his campaign manager immediately resigned in protest. Let me make this as plain as I can to the smart people. The campaign manager who resigned, yeah, let that person go. Marginalize that guy. Yeah. Try making too woke be a cancelable offense. And again, the Democrats are going to focus too much on this social issue shit, which I think is kind of a non-starter for most people. I think the electorate just proved they just want to be left alone. It's important for America to have a center-left party and for that party to be competitive and a good first step toward that goal. A center-left party. Okay, again, two right-wing parties is what, this is where he kind of goes off the rails. He got the slobs versus snobs thing. He got the like, we're better than you. And so you don't deserve a voice. That's how the Democrats have been the last four years. Uh, longer than that, probably since the Obama era. But this is the part where he misses the point. And I'm going to show you. Would be to make the voters not want to punch you in the face. <laughs> I will conclude. <laughs> I will conclude by saying the reason I'm so mad at the Democrats is because as a voter, the issues that were important to me were democracy and the environment. And now there's no one to champion or defend either of them. Because okay, that is ridiculous. But again, because you, with your aggressively anti common sense agenda and shitty exclusionary attitude, blew it. You lost everything House, Senate, White House, Supreme Court, and left us completely unprotected and ready to be violated. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody! Where do I start there? Okay. The end of that, the environment, 
and issues he cares about. If you were actually paying attention, Bill, like I just showed with the abortion thing, that's a non-issue. The Democrats hype that shit up. And with the environment, you had RFK Jr. at Trump rallies getting MAGA to cheer for clean water and clean air and cleaning up our health care system. And I want to ask you again, don't you want a safe environment for your children? Oh, you want to, oh, you want to know that the food that you're feeding them is not filled with chemicals that are going to give them cancer and chronic disease. And don't you want a president that's going to make America healthy again? And part of, you know, Bill's show this week was he had Casey Means. And that was another sign to me that like, okay, Bill's getting it. Because Casey and Callie Means have been very closely intertwined with RFK and the Trump campaign talking about make America healthy again and clean up our food system. And so I want to go to, I promise that I would not pick on Kyle and Crystal anymore, but this was Kyle's take of the Bill Maher rant. Smoke more on Bill Maher's blaming trans people in wokeness for Democrats losing to Trump. Kamala never mentioned either. Stop begging for an already far too conservative Democratic Party to get more conservative. We need fighters to take on MAGA clown, the MAGA clown show and bi corrupt big money donors who have destroyed our country. So Kyle just like jumping in and missing the point as well. Here was my response to Kyle. And I think this is a big overlooked factor in why the Democrats lost. And I'm going to show you hard evidence of that. The Democratic Party is further to the right than the GOP is in 2024, Kyle. David Frum, John Bolton, Robert Kagan, Liz Cheney, Joe Scarborough, Jeffrey Goldberg all supported Kamala. But you already know that you get money to act this dumb. Not all money is good money, though. And someone they were talking about Liz Cheney on one of his Club Random podcasts. And Bill goes, I don't think voters are thinking about that. Voters don't care about the Iraq war. They don't care about foreign policy. Yes, they do, Bill, because foreign policy is domestic policy. I don't know if you've noticed this. So here's a great breakdown from James Lee um, about what the Trump campaign did in Michigan. And this is the part that the Bill Mars and Kyle's been outraged by this billboard that links Kamala Harris to Liz Cheney. Yeah, how dare people link Kamala Harris to a neocon like Liz Cheney? Ro Khanna wrote on Twitter, these cynical Harris Cheney billboards are all over Dearborn and Southeast Michigan. Residents in the area are getting mailers with the two linked. Hmm, I wonder where they got that idea from. It's not like they've been hanging out and campaigning together. <laughs> A lot. Like, if you want to win the blue wall, this is not the person you want to be hanging out with. If you want to win over America? Talk about how you're going to end the war in the Middle East. You want to win over America? Talk about what you're going to do to end the chronic disease epidemic in the United States. There's clearly something very wrong with the health of Americans compared to pretty much every single other industrialized nation. But I don't see Kamala Harris talking about this at all. This right here is not going to work. I'm not being cynical. It's just, it's just the truth. Yeah. So anyway, basically, I just wanted to say, well, f you, Kyle. I don't want to go to your faggy birthday party anyway. I'd rather hang out at home than have to be around you and your Jew mom for a day. Kiss my balls, asshole. I don't think Crystal's Jewish. So Dude, I totally Cartman, mean that, Kyle. I really, really want to go to Casa Bonita. I'm sorry we had that fight just now. You know, I mean, I said some things, you said some things, but I think it was good and we've, we've moved past it. She's up six points now, guys. She crushed him in the debate, but now her commentary afterward, I mean, that's pitch perfect right there. Well, f*** you, Kyle! I hope you die! <laughs> I hope you f***ing die! <laughs> all right, all right. 